Key questions for Sunday School Health, is there adequate space for present and future growth? Again, Sunday School Growth, Sabbath uh, uh, Church School, uh, these are all classroom driven, so you gotta have space uh, for them. Uh, do the classes match the room sizes? The 80% rule of thumb holds true for classes just as it does for worship. So if you fill up a room like this to 80% capacity, typically that class will stop growing in a, in a room. It holds true in classrooms just as it does uh, in, in other worship facilities. What is the quality of the educational facilities? How does it match the expectations of people uh, again, if, you know, if you're in a hot climate, you're probably going to have to have air conditioning today, those sorts of things. Uh, nowadays, more and more, there's a demand for PowerPoint and those sort of things, even in small churches. I'm amazed. I go to little churches, and I'm amazed at the technology some of them have. Out in Wyoming, you know, this little town of 200 and this little church of 50, and they've got this fa fabulous PowerPoint set up. I'm thinking, wow, you know, <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, the people are that way, and uh, they watch TV, they're on the internet, and this creates certain expectations when they come to church, even for education. Are, are new units being created? New units means new classes, new groups, new ministries. Uh, new people are attracted to new things, not to old things. So if you've got uh, six classes that you've established, and they've been around for a long time, they're not going to attract new people. If new people wanted to come, they would have been there already. They're not coming. But you start a new class, and you'll get some new people. Uh, new units bring new people. What is the quality of teaching? You know, we need to, to in, in continue to raise the quality by um, educating and giving some teacher training and that sort of thing to our teachers. Key questions continued. What type of curriculum strategy is in place uh, for teaching? Uh, are classes ministry-based or just educational-based? Education is just passing on information, but ministry-based means that we as a class are going to do something uh, together in ministry. And more and more in our world where people are thinking missionally, we're going to have to take our small groups and our classes and and take them out in the ministry. So there's nothing that says that we, we as a teacher of a Sunday school class can't say to our Sunday school class, let's, let's do something. You know, what could we do? Maybe two things, one in the fall, one in the spring. We could do something outside the church and ministry uh, to people in the community. Uh, or maybe three or four times a year. It doesn't have to be every Sunday or every Saturday, but we can, we can do it on a regular basis and get our people out there and getting them used to engaging people outside the church. Uh, are care groups with leaders in place? You know, do we have groups where people are uh, taking care of each other? Is Sunday school outreach plan in place? Do we have a plan to reach out? Is fellowship planned and intentional? Uh, just some questions. What priority does the pastor give to Sunday school or Sabbath school. Yeah. Uh, we all know that what the pastor blesses sometimes thrives and what the pastor ignores sometimes dies, right? Yeah. That's what happens. Now, in a big church, the pastor can't mention every ministry every Sunday. That's the way it is. But uh, uh, you're going to have to pick some priority ministries and mention those. And um, as you do, that will help. What plan is in place to secure new teachers and leaders? Again, the, the easiest way to do this, every teacher needs an apprentice teacher. They get their own apprentice teacher. You don't find them. You just encourage every teacher. We want every teacher to have an apprentice. And then when you have a teacher training or a small group training, you invite the, the teachers and the apprentice, or the small group leaders and their apprentice. And uh, you're preparing your future leaders right there. Does the church offer teacher training? These would be questions you'd want to ask as a consultant. What is the time allotted for teaching? You know, is, is, is the class time 
uh, 40 minutes or 50 minutes or uh, 90 minutes or 75 minutes. Uh, you know, what is it? Just kind of look at that. How good is the record keeping? Do they know how many people are in attendance? Uh, a lot of times churches do keep good attendance uh, at the Sunday school or Sabbath school level. In fact, when a church gets to be a mega church, where do you keep attendance? How do you keep attendance? Because you can't keep attendance in worship anymore. It's too hard to count people. Right. At the kiosk. Yes. And that's, how they keep that's the right. That's right. Yeah. You you have registration, check in, yeah. and you uh, you can really do this easily with parents that have kids. Yeah. Because when they check in their kids, they want safety for their kids, and they're they're willing to check in and give you the information and everything. And so you can really track people who are younger with kids uh, through the, the Sunday schools and the Sabbath schools and the educational means of that. Uh, I have not seen that. that when they, when they come, when they really? Yeah, they I, I did not know that. Well, I'd love to see one of those. I'd like to go to that church. <laughs> I finally went to Southeast Christian in Louisville and saw that they, they had escalators. You know, first church I'd ever seen with escalators. So now I want to see a church with turnstiles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can just have people standing at the door with those little clickers, you know, click, 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 click. <laughs> it's hard when it gets bigger. What is the commitment and quality of the leadership, uh, the class leadership? How does the church recognize and reward the teachers and the workers? You know, what gets rewarded gets done. You know, what gets praised gets done. How do we praise our teachers? How do we praise our small group leaders? How do we reward them? Um, I think easily one of the easiest ways to reward them is to have at least an end of the year thank you barbecue, dinner, something. And you invite all the leaders, you invite all their apprentices, and you provide a free meal for them somehow or other. Larger churches will typically cater it in and pay for it. Smaller churches might do more of a uh, potluck type of thing. Uh, but then somewhere in that, you stand up and you thank them. You know, verbally, the pastor, somebody stands up and says, you know, every year we like to have this dinner. You know, we appreciate you so much. We know you work hard. You, you sacrifice your time. And we just want to thank you for what you've done in the lives of our people. Hey, just that is enough. You know, just enough. You know, in smaller churches... Uh, a pastor could write hand notes or something like that. But in a big church, that gets to be too much. But just having some sort of an appreciation dinner meal uh, once a year uh, will go a long way to keep uh, teachers uh, committed and, and excited and feeling that their work is valuable. <clears throat>